throughout, especially going across like these little, these little small roads and everything, you can hear it a mile off. guys so how's it going welcome back to the channel uh you're watching socially driven and this is my 2010 jet black bmw e92 m3 now luke you probably oh people are saying luke why did you choose an e92 m3 you probably thought i was gonna go for something like an m2 or uh, maybe like an f80 m3 not a sort of e92 older models or any of the e9x models um one reason being is just this v8 it is like It just puts a smile on your face every single time, like every single time, and it's and it's an incredible car to drive. Um, I've always loved the E9X models, um, no matter what they are, the 90 saloons, uh, the 91 Tourins. I'd happily, happily have a 91 Tourin like 335D as a daily. Um, I'd even have another E92 as a 335D or something like that as a daily. But the ultimate and be all is the, obviously the E92 M3 with a 4 litre V8. Now these push out about 420 horsepower from standard. Uh, this has been stage two ECU calibrated, so it is running apparently around 450 horsepower, but I've all had that checked, um, uh, probably at Rich's Dino with RCS, so we'll get that looked at. But it, it feels phenomenal. Um, the DCT gearbox, dual, dual, dual clutch transmission, there we go. The dual clutch transmission gearbox is um, amazing to get on with. Um, it's actually quite responsive considering the age of the car. Uh, it's very, very responsive. I don't know if that's helped with like software within within the gearbox. Um, I know you can get um, GTS software to put on this gearbox as well, but I'm absolutely over the moon with purchasing this car. Um, I got it at a relatively good price as well. And from obviously the title, it is fitted, yes, with a pretty much a four grand um, Army Tricks exhaust system. Now the valve switch itself is actually down here. I can do it on my app as well, um, as well as obviously on the on the switch. So I'm gonna get it set up on my phone so I can do it like that. But we're currently just driving through some nice country lanes. Um, it is a abysmal wet day, typical for the UK weather, um, but it, it is what it is and we make things work. Now, I looked far and wide to try and find something like this because I wanted it like black black. Like you get the different types of black. So there's like sapphire black, this, this is jet black. Uh, there's Jerez black and ruby black. Um, the Jerez and ruby, so the Jerez is like more of like a blue tint to it. Um, the ruby is more like a red tint to it within the name. Um, but the, the jet black and the sapphire black are quite hard to find, especially sapphire black because there's only, I believe there's only one E92 M3 in sapphire black in the country. They're actually for sale, so if you wanna go check it out, um, go check it out on Facebook, it is for sale. But these are like ultimate driver's cars. And I was thinking to myself, like what could I get after the whole catastrophe that happened with the McGann? Like what could I move on to? How could I progress? And I'm so glad I stumbled upon this car because I was always in two mindsets about it. It was difficult, but I'm glad I made it work. And I actually made the long 12, 13 hour trip yesterday to go and collect it. And it, it was a long trip, but it was totally, totally worth it. Now, with this car comes a lot of responsibilities and things to look after. With a four litre V8 engine, naturally, uh, naturally, naturally aspirated, um, you can get these supercharged and um, they do sound, um, with a supercharged kit, they do sound absolutely mind blown with that. But the V8 on its own as it is now sounds incredible. So if you wanna go down the line of putting turbos and supercharged kits on it, I'm personally not going to. Um, I just I just don't want to, I don't feel like it's feasible enough, I don't feel like I should do it, but um, I just want to keep that nice naturally aspirated sound to it. Um, but if you, if you were going to do something like that, I'd probably recommend going down the supercharger route because the supercharger is very, very cool compared to the um, compared to the turbo kits and stuff like that. Now, as for like how much power these can take on the solid on the standard engine with the blocks and everything like that, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I've seen a few people on the forums with the supercharger kits running around six to seven hundred horsepower um so obviously i don't know if you need to upgrade like the arp head bolts stud, the stud bolts whatever um anything like that 
But this for me is gonna be a club sport car. Um, I'm gonna be putting like a rear cage in it. We're gonna be doing coilovers, changing the wheels and not going too mad because it doesn't need a lot, um, especially with the exhaust system it's fitted now. Now, talking of the exhaust system, it is totally brutal. Like, I'm honestly blown away with it. And to be fair to Army Tricks, this is the first ever car I've come across with an Army Tricks system. And it's an incredible piece of engineering from them. Like, it really, really is. It's just something, like, you know, it's not your typical exhaust system. It's built to a really high quality. And the fact on a car like this, with it being so old, most modern cars, yes, come valved. Um, but this this car, these don't come valved um, from factory. So to have that, you know, choice to have it open up or quiet uh, on a longer drive it's it's nice to have but really it is really nice because when it is open it is it is ear blowing it will burst your eardrums if you're sat like too close to it it's, it's mental now moving on to probably the bad sort of things with these cars is like your general wear and tear items so like your let me just turn around here a minute. So the, the common problems with these is obviously the rod bearings and actuators. It's a massive thing within the forums and for people all over the world that own one of them. Um, luckily for me, the rod bearings and the actuators have both been done at Evolve. Um, I've got receipts for both of them. The, the guy that actually had this car before me was a really, really nice chap. I don't know if he's ever gonna get around to watching this video, but I appreciate everything you did for me. Um, he was very patient with the car. Um, waited and you know give me every bit of information that I really needed so like the history and everything like this like keeping up the maintenance um, making sure the car's fine all the time is definitely one of those things because they're really sensitive so um, like spark for like a big changes even if you go check out actually on Evolve's um, if you check out the Evolve have actually got themselves a really high mileage one of these and they've been showing the differences between like what it can change with port brake horsepower wise or changing the spark plugs etc so um, that's one thing we're actually going to notice as well when you have one of these is that you'll probably see the fuel light a lot so it drinks like no tomorrow um, honestly I drove the car back yesterday best I got driving like a granny was probably about 27 miles per gallon you're probably thinking Luke that's actually quite a lot for a V8 yeah it might be but you still get about 350 miles of a tank and that's without enjoying the car and that's what not what you buy it you buy this car to enjoy it so it's one of them but you it, it compensates it for when you when you've really opened up the valves like if we if we drop down the window now and let me put it into uh yeah so we've got the valves open now we're not in m mode but if we put it in m mode Especially going across like these little, these little small roads and everything, you can hear it a mile off. Now I'm not going to go too hectic with it around here because it is a few houses and things out around here as well. I don't want to cause too much disruption, but you can see what I mean. Like the, the smile never goes away when you've got that downshift. The downshifts are just absolutely brutal. Like if I drop it a second now. really can but we'll close the window up shut the valve and uh so you can hear me again but i'm honestly like madly loving this car it's a car i've kind of like sort of dreamt of for a little bit my main aim was to get an m2 competition but now i've been in this driven this driven a few of them actually and got my own it's opened my eyes up to what the capabilities of this car can be um especially with you know you see a lot of them at the nurburgring around the track and um you know they're they're such capable cars of producing mega lap times and you really actually in all honesty don't have to do a lot of modifications to them to get into a club sport spec so yeah now another topic i quickly want to move on to is basically the, the cost of these vehicles like obviously we've, we've gone through like running costs sort of um it's probably about 90 to 100 pounds maybe i think it's a bit more than actually yeah, it's like 100 120 pounds um to to fill this car up um like i said you get about 300 to 350 miles out of that it's not great but it doesn't matter now maintenance costs and everything is high um when you're doing rod bearings actuators but we'll focus on all that into like another video another day um another thing i want to talk about mainly with costs is the actual price to buy these cars now 
it probably is a great time now to buy these cars. I mean, it's not the greatest. A year or two ago would have been the greatest, but they are always, always creeping up in value. And um, I don't think that's going to stop. This is the only M M3 that BMW ever produced to have a V8 in it. So the fact that they're never going to do it again, and a lot of companies now are producing engines that are turbocharged with less cylinders, um, you know, smaller displacements, it's just going to be a lot more difficult in the future. I think the last people that, you know, the last sort of manufacturers that are going to produce cars with like V8s, V10s, V12s are going to be like your Lamborghinis, your Aston Martins, things like that. And it's not really going to be affordable cars. So whilst you can, I recommend getting your hands on one of these cars. They're great, massive potential, and um, they put a smile on your face every single time. Yeah, so here is the car behind me. It's, it's kind of surreal saying that I own it because it is a very cool, iconic car. Like, and well, a, a car I think I will, it will become a, iconic anyway. But um, what a mega car it is. Like, honestly, look at how incredible it is to look. Obviously, in its stock form, does just look a bit like a normal United you know, 2 um, that you'd see on the road. But obviously, as you come around, get the M3 accents on the side, put your M Sport mirrors from factory, obviously, the M3 wheels. And then the back end is just something else. That Army Trick exhaust system is mind blowing. So, guys, to help me film this video today, I've actually had Jack from Vibrant Media. Um, here's links obviously on screen, description down below. Check them out. Great videography, great photography. Um, obviously, a lot of it is automotive, um, but he's got some mad skills. Very creative chap, um, and he's come down today to film this video on the new M3. So, hopefully, you've enjoyed it. You had a good time, Jack? It's been good man, it's been good fun, it's been thanks good. for the invite. We'll, um, we'll do some more clips soon, but um, honestly guys, check out his stuff, it's great. Um, he actually used, he used to use a camera on filming on now an M50, but you've got up to a Sony A7 A7 III, which is doing mad bits on now. So if you're into your mad photography in the southwest or video field, if you want any work done, Jack's here, I'm waiting for you. Cheers, <laughs> so guys, I'm not going to go too much into it. You've seen the car, you've heard it, you've seen the little movie and you've had me chat about it but the real thing is you guys want to know is probably like what's it like to ride it after i've had it a month after about two months how i've gotten with it how reliable is it and etc so let me crack on with it get some mods done and we'll just go with the flow and enjoy the car but this epic build is going to be mad this next e36 is just going to be phenomenal um it's starting to pour it down rain guys so i'm going to have to wrap today's video but modifications on this car that we've got so far is obviously a stage two map pushing out a pound around 450 horsepower. We've got an even tree carbon intake and a valved army trick exhaust system as well, which sounds incredible. But guys, I hope you have all enjoyed today's video. If you have, smash a like, hit the subscribe button, and make sure you check out every single person's link in the description down below. And we'll catch you all in the next episode of this mega, mega build. Bye for now.